Welcome. I, I'm Larry Elliott. Uh, I'm the economics editor of The Guardian, and welcome to this uh, session three of this afternoon's uh, event. Uh, it's called Innovative Strategies to Strengthen Development Impacts of Remittances, uh, Lessons from Mexico, and we're very grateful to have with us uh, His Excellency Diego Gomez Pickering, the, the ambassador of Mexico, who's going to talk for about 10 minutes about the three in one, three times one program. Uh, in Mexico, how it works, uh, and then I'm going to ask for contributions from the other three members of the panel. We've got Kova Seguia, who's Associate Professor in International Political Economy at the LSE, on my left there, uh, Rachel Turner from DFID, she's the Director of East and Central Africa, on my right, and on my far right, uh, Demeki Atnafu, who's the Minister Councillor at the Ethiopian Embassy. Uh, we have to finish this session at 6 o'clock, so I will keep uh, strictly to time, but there will be time for questions. There's also a reception afterwards, which I hope those of you who can will, will stay for and, and network a bit uh, after the session is over. But I'm going to ask uh, His Excellency the Ambassador to, to, to kick things off, and then we'll ask the other three panellists to comment. Ambassador. Larry, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here be part of this very significant effort by ODI to analyze the different ways in which we can liaise better um, big diasporas, like is the case of the Mexican diaspora in the U.S., and, um, and their respective home countries. And uh, in this sense, the three times one program uh, of the Mexican government that his, has been going on for uh, more than two decades we believe it's a, it's a good example, of course, like uh, any any mechanism and any any uh, program has, has things that could be um, could be improved. The, the program itself has worked so well for so many years in linking directly the diasporas, Mexican diasporas in the United States and, and, um, and um, their um, original communities back in Mexico. And we do believe it should be uh, should be analyzed and taken into consideration when we talk about other regions of the world like for example, Sub-Saharan Africa, where we have a big, big diasporas living, living in other regions of the world, and we want to make that um, uh, sort of like a, a better, a better connection. So uh, the three times one program, basically, what it does is, as I said before, it leads the diaspora. Uh, it combines the funding, funding from uh, diaspora groups with funding from the three levels of the Mexican government. Mexican government is a, uh, it's a federal government, so you've got the federal level of government. Then you have the, the state level and then the municipal level. So um, each level of the Mexican government brings one part, uh, hence the three and times one, the one part is a contribution from the migrant organizations. And all of this is used to uh, implement infrastructure projects in different, in different parts of, uh, of Mexico. So um, let's just talk a bit about the context in order to understand how this is relevant and why it's um, considered to be a successful program or so far has been successful. So Mexico is one of the um, countries with the largest number of migrants. Um, in the United States, depends on the sources, of course, uh, most of these migrants live in the United States. Uh, around 12 million of them were born in Mexico. So we're talking about a population of 12 million directly born in Mexico and uh, now uh, living in the United States plus around 19 million that are, are born in the U.S. but um, are of Mexican origin and uh, in most cases still Mexican nationals. So we're talk, talk, talking of a total of 32, uh, but like some, some other sources uh, uh, take the number up to 33 million and some other even 40 million if you consider second generation Mexicans. So we're talking about a, like a huge population. This could be a whole country in itself the millions of Mexicans living in the U.S. So um, approximately 98% of our diaspora lives in, in, in the U.S. Lives in, are part of this between 31 and 40 million, depending on the sources we look at. Uh, and uh, it, it, it makes a huge population. So if we think of this population in terms of how much money they send every year or every month or every day eventually uh, back to Mexico, we're talking about uh, billions of dollars. And of course, all that money had been traveling along the border, across the border, north to south, uh, for, for decades. And for many, many, many years, nothing was done with that, except for, for example, what, what the migrants paid for 
uh, at um, Western Union or Money Graham or whatever the name of the, of the institution in charge of transferring that money. But other than that, nothing was really done. So we started, uh, we started uh, experiencing the communities themselves, Mexican communities in, in the U.S. getting together and um, getting organized and, and thinking of ways of doing something with that, 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 that bunch of money that they earned and the part of it that they wanted to, to send back to their families and communities. And they were very eager, as I assume every diaspora is eager, to be connected to their own communities back in Mexico and to be, to be able to do something about the, the living conditions of the ones that stayed behind. So it's here when the program starts, the, the three times one program starts. Um, the three times one program started as an initiative, as I said, by migrant groups. Migrant groups wanting to do something and wanting to, to, to be a part of the decisions taken back in their communities. They, 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 they believed, and with good reason, that they had a word on what, what, was, what was happening back in their respective cities and communities, and they wanted to be uh, economically involved in that. So um, in the 1980s, they, they started um, analyzing ways of, uh, of improving their hometowns through basically infrastructure. Um, at this level, the, federal, the Mexican government approached some of these organizations and uh, recognized and acknowledged the, 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 the initiative they were, um, they were putting together and said, OK, if, if you do this and you send money, let's say, to this little town in northwest in northwestern Mexico, then what we'll do, and at this time it was only the, the, the municipal and the state level um, government said, like, okay, if you put one dollar, then I will put another dollar. So in this way, we had one dollar from the municipal government, one dollar from the state government, and then one dollar from the organization that was linked to that specific city. So that's, uh, that's how it started and um, back in the 80s. Since um, since it started, and more specifically between 1992 and 2001, the program um, carried out around 400 projects in which migrants invested 5 million US dollars out of a total investment of 15 million, million US dollars, <coughs> which was under, the, under the, 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 the format of two times one, right? 5 million by the, by the, by the migrant organizations, and then the municipal and the state level governments uh, uh, bring uh, brought five million each, so we had a total budget of, of 15, 15 million dollars that um, like uh, allowed for bigger and broader projects. And the good thing about this, and we'll talk about it later on, is that the migrant organizations uh, were not only putting the money, but had a say as well in which sort of project should be implemented in this or that city. And this is very important because they are the ones coming from the specific community city. Or, 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 or part of the country that were more aware of what was really needed, more than the, more than the governments, because in many cases, what happens is, of course, that the government is not trusted, and like many of these migrants left the country uh, in the beginning because they couldn't find opportunities brought by the country, so, by the government. So it's important <coughs> that they had not only like, the initiative, but also you know, like, leverage when, when it came to, to deciding which projects should be a part of, of the program. Um, since 2002, the federal government uh, decided to be a part of this of this program, and associated with the local and well the, the state and the municipal authorities to provide matching funds. So hence we started with a three times one program. So now we have, and that's how it's been working um, uh, for the last um, 12 years already. It's been 12 years since 2002. So this program. Uh, is coordinated uh, under under uh, a figure that's very particular to, to Mexico, which is an institute that is part of the Foreign Office called the Institute of Mexicans Abroad. Considering the huge amount of Mexicans living abroad, as we said before, a population of anything between 33 and 40 million, uh, which could be a country in itself, uh, the Mexican Foreign Ministry decided to create this institute to li liaise directly with the, with the big diaspora, Mexican diaspora, abroad, more specifically in the U.S. The institute was created in 2003, right, uh, right a year after, after the federal government decided to be a part of the three times one program in order to make the most out of this. Um, um, as we said, it's, it's a government office that depends on the, uh, uh, it's, it's located within the foreign office, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, the, the real aim of it is to empower these Mexican communities abroad. 
uh, to increase their visibility in Mexico and to strengthen their voice because sometimes each of them having uh, um, individual initiatives do not really necessarily reflect uh, in, the, in, in, in the loudest of ways back in Mexico. So <coughs> having a single institution dealing with or liaison with the whole diaspora gives a, a, a better platform for providing more exposure to all of the individual efforts that each of the communities does. Because when we talk about the Mex Mexican diaspora in the US, we're not only talking about New York or Philadelphia. We're talking about Anchorage, Alaska, Honolulu in Hawaii, uh, Austin, Texas, Kansas City, uh, Des Moines in Iowa. We talk about pretty much all of the United States. Mexico has 51 consulates in the United States. That's more than a consulate per state. The United States, of course, it's 50 states, right? So we talk about the whole country, as I said. So it's very important to have to have everything, uh, to have a platform to sort of like uh, uh, have better organized efforts. Um, uh, and the, the important thing, as we said, is to strengthen, I mean, the, the, of the Institute is not only to, to to provide a voice in Mexico, but also to provide a voice for this diaspora in the United States itself. So the, the Institute for Mexicans Abroad works on both sides of the border, and it's quite, 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 quite active. Um, and they institutionalized the three times one, which is uh, the important part about about getting to know the institute uh, for the purposes of, of this uh, of this talk. Uh, and um, when it comes to implementing, so the institute uh, sort of like organizes and liaises with the diaspora organizations. And it is the Ministry of Social Development on the Mexican side at the federal level, <coughs> the one that actually uh, implements those infrastructure projects, right? So those are the two, at the federal government, the two organizations that are linked to the program. Besides, of course, the, the state and, and municipal uh, authorities and the local diaspora organizations back in the US. So the program, the three times one program, aims to combine and coordinate migrants' resources with the state and federal funds to develop, as we said before, social and more importantly, infrastructure projects in the communities of origin of these diaspora organizations. As we said, explained before, for each dollar or peso, in the case of Mexico, provided by the migrants, um, the federal, the state, and the local governments provide each peso it themselves. So they match contribution and they create, hence, this structure of three times one. Um, the three times one program is uh, the government's or the Mexican government's answer to the interest of migrants to support their hometowns. As we said before, and that's something we should never forget, uh, at least in the Mexican diaspora case, uh, uh, all the all the Mexican um, living abroad, they they never cut their the, their ties with their hometowns. They are very connected to them, and even though after pa uh, if they pass two, three, four, five decades abroad, they are always, always in connection. And this is also explained f uh, f f because Mexico is next door to the US, so it's not <coughs> as geographically distant as you know, like Europe or, or Asia. So this also provides sort of like a, a, a closer connection because it's, it's clear that any migrant that leaves their country, they keep <coughs> on uh, relating to the country, at least in, in, in their heads and in their hearts. But in the Mexican case, it, the, 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 the geographical proximity of Mexico and the U.S. allows for maybe a closer connection. So the government, the government's answer to this, to this very, very uh, strong will of the Mexican uh, diaspora in the U.S. to to connect to the Hamptons is is the three times one uh, project. And um, the main objectives of of the three time, uh, times one program are four are five. It's to channel the collective remittances towards uh, social development and community projects to benefit migrant communities with high levels of poverty or marginality, which pretty much the communities out of which, of course, uh, these this migrants came, came from, to promote creation and growth of Mexican hometown associations across the US so that there's better organization, better communication, and eventually uh, uh, more, more, um, more incidents, more, more, more impact to strengthen the civil society government partnerships, very important thing uh, for the Mexican administration at that time, and uh, that, that uh, continues to be the case nowadays, and that has proven to be to be to be um, to be successful. And number five, of course, to reinforce the Mexican community's networks abroad and between the south and between their hometowns. Um, so the types of projects we have through the three times one um, program. Um, or um, as we said before, ba basically dealing with infrastructure and community projects that build, expand, rehabilitate, 
and equip facilities for um, for the communities in Mexico. And it could be anything from water supply, drainage, sewerage, electrification, roads, bridges, sidewalks, parks, sanitation and conservation of natural resources, culture and recreation. That means, of course, schools, libraries, museums, uh, sport facilities, and um, social and community development, which is uh, centers for senior citizens, uh, homes for abandoned children, shelters, uh, firefighter houses, uh, general equipment for civil emergencies. So uh, it's everything when we think of infrastructure, really. And um, I mean that the the how it's decided, it's as we said before, in conjunction between all the all the all the all the participants in the program. So according to its rule of its rules of operation, evaluation and approving projects is done by um, something we call the validation and attention to migrants committees. And these committees are formed up uh, by the, the, the different diaspora organization and representatives of the federal, municipal, and state level uh, of government. Uh, the beneficiaries of productive projects have to repay 100% of the federal funds during a maximum period of, uh, of five years after that was that was invested. Um, the second type of projects that we have are uh, the productive projects, which are oriented to agricultural livestock um, and uh, the services uh, sector and the manufacturing sector. And um, it could be you know, community level benefiting at least five families. Uh, at the family level, uh, where um, they benefit between two and three families, at the individual level, would they benefit at least one family? Um, and the third type of projects that are part of the three times one um, program are the training, research, and uh, business advice projects, which pretty much combine uh, the participation of higher uh, education institutes, research institutions, with civil society organizations and uh, researchers in the, in the communities of origin of the, of the, of the diaspora groups. Um, Going back to the financing scheme, um, these projects are funded by contributions um, from the hometown associations, pretty much the diaspora um, associations, which uh, they they uh, they um, they collaborate with 25 percent of the budget. This is for the two later projects, also the the their types of project, the, the productive projects and the training projects. Uh, the infrastructure projects work under the scheme of uh, one 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 one. Um, well, the home transportation, the data for organization, they, they contribute with 25%. The federal government with 25%. It could be up to $100,000 if it's infrastructure projects, and up to $50,000 uh, if it's uh, patrimonial productive projects. Uh, and they state at municipal levels, they, 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 they uh, collaborate with 50% of the budget. So from 2008, sorry, to 2003, 13, last year, the program invested uh, approximately $748 million in projects uh, for uh, different communities in Mexico. Um, we have, a, a ten, uh, we have a, um, the, the annual budget. Um, you can, it's, I don't know if you can, you managed to see. It's oh, okay, yeah. yeah it's, uh, so it's pretty much uh, uh, during the last eight years how it has been distributed. Uh, the budget in millions of dollars and the, the growth, the annual growth that the program has has had throughout. Uh, of course, the economic crisis that uh, that occurred in 2008 affected the program's uh, the program's budget. If you look at uh, at, uh, at the difference in between 2011 and 2012, uh, because the the diaspora the, the diaspora organizations reduced their funding for the project, uh, even though the crisis did not affect very much Mexico, it did affect very much the United States. So the diaspora communities. Uh, so affected their uh, their salaries and their their economic well-being. Hence, their their uh, their participation economically in the program was reduced specifically in that period, 2011 and 2012, out of the economic crisis that hit the United States. Uh, but during the last two years, uh, the budget has been uh, <coughs> rapidly uh, coming back to its uh, usual growth rate. So the estimated budget for this year, 2014, is of $42 million. And um, it's working currently, the, the, the program, pretty much in all of Mexico, in communities throughout the country. Uh, the program operates in 28 out of the 32 states that uh, compose Mexico. 
uh, where the um, diaspora organizations have, um, have direct links or funding projects with their respective communities. Um, the federal and the local governments uh, or, or authorities are, are willing to extend the program to the other two, the other four states that are a part of the program. But uh, in these states, uh, there aren't enough diaspora organizations uh, linked to them. So that's why uh, we've encountered problems to implementing that program in those particular four states. Um, um, well, and uh, even though, like, uh, here's just another table, of the number of diaspora organizations participating in the program uh, and the, the number of uh, projects implemented each year uh, and, and there's there's just minor minor differences because like not not every year we 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 have the same number of um, diaspora organizations taking part in, uh, in them and also because lately we've uh, uh, we've also been experiences uh, experiencing what we call um, uh, reverted migration which is pretty much return migration so uh, yeah pretty much uh, an important number of uh, former migrants are coming back to Mexico and establishing themselves in Mexico. So the number of uh, diaspora organizations has reduced overall, and hence the number of uh, diaspora organizations taking part in the program has, has also uh, experienced a reduction. But other than that, the program's been uh, working quite, quite, um, quite well. Uh, in, in it's more than two decades of, of, um, of existence. And uh, having said that, of course, there's many things that could be improved. Uh, we do believe it's a very, very important exercise that uh, other parts of the world with relevant um, migrant populations might, uh, might, might have a look at and, uh, and get, get a few ideas to go and implement, uh, to implement their respective regions and countries. Thank but you. I, I think I... <laughs>